Hello and welcome to the end of this video. I will try to find out is it possible to install Windows XP on a real modern PC. Are you ready? Let's go. Our sponsor today is VOD Dig Photo Repair, which allows you to repair, enhance and colorize your photos using AI. You can simply download it from here. Open the app, click install, now go to AI Enhancer and choose Photo Enhancer. Let's enhance this photo for example. Here you can adjust the settings. Now let's look at the result. It looks wonderful. Also, you can colorize old photos. For example, old photos from your relatives. I found black and white picture in the internet. Let's colorize it. Now, all you need is just click here. Let's look at the result. It looks amazing, isn't it? Using this software, you can also enhance and colorize your videos. If you're interested, all links will be in the description. We have Intel i9, 4900K, Asus Z790H motherboard, NVIDIA RTX 4070, 32GB of DDR5 memory, and PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSD with 2TB of capacity. Windows XP was released on October 25, 2001. It was almost 23 years ago. Will it run today on a modern PC? Let's find out. To show you the whole process, I've connected this Evermedia capture card. You can now go to the boot menu and select our super fast USB thumb drive. Okay, first of all, let's try an G version of Windows XP. Will it work? Let's find out. The setup begins and the error message appears. Error A5. If you were watching one of my previous videos about installing Windows XP on a modern PC, you should remember that we solved this problem by pressing F7 during installation. So let's try again. Press on F7 and the error message appears again, but now we have 7B error. The reason why this error message appears is because we're trying to boot from USB. To install Windows XP properly, we need to boot from a CD. But even if you'll try to boot from CD-ROM and start to press F7, we will get the previous A5 error. In the previous video, we already solved this problem by integrating HCI driver. So let's do the same actions. All we need to do is to open and light app, then click next, then unpack Windows XP image. Next, select drivers and bootable ISO, then click next. And here you must insert the driver. You can download HCA drivers on WinRaid forum. They were created by Fernando. Then you need to go to device manager, find standard SATA HCI controller, select hardware IDs and find this value in this list. But there is no driver for this SATA HCI controller in the list. But today we have a new universal Intel HCI drivers, of course, thanks to Fernando. Let's try to integrate it. By the way, on WinRaid forum, you can find a lot of helpful information about installing Windows operating systems. If you're interested, all the links will be in the description. We need to do the same actions. All you need is just select this driver here. Click OK, next, yes, and wait until it ends. Then click Make ISO, then save it on the desktop, for example. Okay, now we have Windows XP image with integrated HCI drivers. Let's try to install it. Okay, now we must burn the image to a CD. Otherwise, we will get 7B error because of USB 3.0 drivers. It's better to use Ultra ISO. And here is our DVD ROM. Let's go. And of course, right now we need to press F7 button to avoid A5 error. No f way. Looks like my cat helped me. His name is Sirius Black. I can't believe it. It's working? Oh my god. This is just a miracle. I couldn't even imagine it would succeed, but somehow it's working well. Okay, it's too early to celebrate, because this is only the first stage of installation. We should pass the second one. But unfortunately, my keyboard is not working at all. Of course, because of USB 3.0 drivers. So that's all? This is the end? Of course not. Because we can install Windows XP on the previous PC with Intel i9-9900K and Z390 motherboard. Then unplug the SSD disk and connect it to the new PC and try to boot from it. If you want to know how to install Windows XP on Z390 motherboard, you can check the previous video. All links will be in the description. So, the moment of truth. One minute passes and we have a black screen. 
the loading screen appears. Wait, what? Oh my god. How is that even possible? Honestly, I thought it won't boot, but it's working somehow. Incredible. Unfortunately, my mouse and my keyboard are not working at all. The reason is the same. We don't have USB 3.0 drivers. But that's not the worst. We don't have PS2 port, like it was on Z390 motherboard. What we can do about it? You may say, what about external PCI Express USB adapter? Maybe it's better to use it. Yes, but it's not working anywhere on Windows XP, even on Z390 motherboard, although it has drivers for Windows XP. The only way to control Windows XP, I think, is to use this network adapter and then connect to Windows XP using TeamViewer app. The same actions I did during Windows XP installation on Z390 motherboard. Will it work here? Let's find out. Unfortunately, TeamViewer is not working in my location. Also, I tried to use any disk, but for some unknown reasons, it's not working on Windows XP. So I think we should use Windows XP Remote Desktop. To be more compatible, I will use this PC from 2005. By the way, we'll use this PC in the next video. The video will be called Building a Top 2005 PC. It doesn't have any OS installed, so we'll install Windows XP here too. That's how the old BIOS looks like. To boot from CD-ROM, we need to select it here. Windows XP was installed successfully. By the way, this is my first PC with AMD processor. First of all, I want to try to connect from this old PC to Z390 PC. If it will work, it means we can use it on a new Z790 motherboard too. And as you can see, it sees shared folders. But by some unknown reason, it had to connect to remote users. I tried to open Windows XP ports and disable Windows Firewall, but it still doesn't work. And as you can see here, there is a message for users to connect remotely to this computer. The user account must have a password. So how can I type a password when my mouse and my keyboard are not working? Luckily, there is an app from Windows XP era called Redmin. It's working perfectly on Windows XP. Let's try to connect to Z390 motherboard. And yes, it's working well. I think it will be perfect in our case. By the way, this app is perfectly working on Windows 11. So you can connect from Windows 11 to Windows XP. Amazing. Type in the comment section, do you want a guide for this app? If yes, I will film the video about it. So then we can just unplug our SSD with Windows XP from Z390 motherboard and connect it to the new PC. Also, we need to connect our PCI Express network adapter, one of PCI Express slots. If Z790 motherboard will detect the adapter, we will be able to connect to Windows XP and control it on a modern PC. Funny about installing Windows XP on a modern PC was easier than setting up Windows XP remote desktop. To make sure the network adapter is detected in operating system, I will use run commands for Windows XP. To check the adapter, we need to open network connections. All we need is to find this file, which is located in Windows System 32 folder. Then copy it and place it in Documents and Settings. User, Start Menu, Programs, Startup. Now if we will run Windows XP on a modern PC, the network connections window will open automatically on Startup. By the way, using Windows XP Startup, we can open any program we want. For example, CPU Z, my computer properties, etc. Okay, let's try to boot. Unfortunately, it doesn't detect our network card. I don't know exactly why this happens. Maybe it's because of chipset drivers. Or maybe the reason is PCI Express version. Because Z790 motherboard has PCI Express 5.0 version. 4.0 version and 3.0 version. It doesn't even have 2.0 slot, which was on Z390 motherboard. Unfortunately, we can't connect any input device or pointing device 
to a modern PC. We can connect even a network card, but we can use Windows XP run commands to open, for example, my computer properties, which is very interesting to see, or for example, CPU-Z. Let's try to open computer properties and let's see what will happen. To open system properties, we need to place this file from system32 folder into Windows XP startup folder. Here it is and place it right here. Selecting our SSD with Windows XP and now my computer properties window should open. And here it is, Intel i9-14900K. And we have only 3 GB of RAM. It happens because we installed a 32-bit system. Very often in the comment section I see comments like Hey, he is tricking us. It's all fake. He installed it on a virtual machine. So here is the proof. Here is our PC. Here in my notice RTX 4070. This HDMI cable goes from 4070 to my LG monitor. Let's turn it on. Here in the boot menu we must select my test SSD. And here it is, Windows XP on 14900K. Ok, now let's try to run CPU-Z. I installed it before on Z390 motherboard. All we need is to create a shortcut and place it into the same place, right here. Ok, CPU-Z is working well. As you can see, we have 24 cores and for some unknown reason, 24 threads. It's very strange because Intel i9-14900K has 32 threads. Go next, look at the core speed. We have only 3 GHz. I don't know why it's so low, maybe because of additional cores, which by the way can be disabled in BIOS. Let's try to disable them. Ok, here is our efficient cores. Let's set it to 0. Ok, now we have only 8 cores and 8 threads, but the core speed hasn't changed. That's all? Is this the end again? Hell no! Because amazingly, there is Windows XP image for a modern PC called Windows XP Dark Lord. As you can see, it includes hundreds of USB 3.0, NVMe, SATA HCI drivers. All the links for this ISO and the guides you can find on my Patreon page. All the links will be in the description. Now let's try to install it. But unfortunately, the error message appears. 7E. We have A5, 7B, but this error I see for the first time. Then I tried to install Windows XP on a previous PC, and this red screen appears. Honestly, I've never seen a red background during Windows XP installation. At first glance, all looks fine, but unfortunately, no. Because we are stuck on this screen, it means it's impossible to install Windows XP, Dark Lord, on a modern PC. I was desperate until I asked Fernando about USB 3.0 drivers and he sent me this link Intel USB 3.0 drivers for Windows XP and here I found this message by George King search for Windows XP 2 ESD it should give you what you need and many more but what is Windows XP 2 ESD this is a modern Windows XP ISO which allows you to install Windows XP on a modern PC the link for this ISO and instructions will be available on my Patreon page you can save your time and support my channel. So let's try to install it. Let's see what will happen. Here as you can see it has 2.5 GB of capacity. And now we can boot from a USB flash drive and use Vento for example. It's very convenient because we don't need to use DVD-ROM. Ok, let's try to boot. As you can see we have a loading screen from Windows 7, I guess. Ok, it's loaded. As you may notice my mouse is working well. I think this is a good news. Here is our menu. It looks different. Ok, click next. Ok, here is the list. As you can see we have 32-bit Windows system and 64-bit. I think it's better to select 32-bit system. Ok, let's try. Click next. Accept the license. Advanced install. It sees all disks. Even an NVMe drive, look. Amazing. I think it's incredible that we are able to install Windows XP today on NVMe disks. Looks like the developers did a lot of work with this ISO, so we're able to do these actions. Ok, here is our test SSD connected to SATA. But let's try to install Windows XP here. Click next. And the setup begins. Look how fast the installation goes. It's all because we're installing Windows XP on SSD. You must be careful there. Because my first thought was it finished with errors. But all you need is just to wait. 
Okay, now we must select my test SSD. Okay, look, now we must select Windows XP Legacy. If you have Z390 motherboard, you can select three or four. But if you have a new Intel CPU with additional cores, you must select five or six. In my case, I must select multiprocessor PC with MPS. Otherwise, you will get a BS OD. You must be patient because for some unknown reasons, it's loading not so fast. Okay, looks like we're on the second stage of installation right now. Let's see what will happen next. Another fun part, as you can see, it restores automatically. On my previous PC, the Z390 motherboard, we had to turn off our PC by pressing power button manually. But here, as you can see, it restores automatically. It means a CPI is working here. It's a good news. Okay, we go on the next stage of installation. We must again select Windows XP Legacy. Wait, what? What is it? I've seen this message before. When hackers were trying to hack me via LAN connection. Olds remember this. And oh my god, it loaded. But again, unfortunately, my mouse and my keyboard are not working. So we have the same issue. It was so close. But nothing to worry about, because I think if we are able to use keyboard or mouse, we will have the same situation like it was on the previous PC with that 390 motherboard. Because the only difference between i9 9900K and 14900K is additional cores. Also, I found a couple messages on the forum. Someone was succeeded to install Windows XP on the same chipset, and he has USB 3.0 drivers working. I guess we need to wait until another USB 3.0 drivers were integrated to this ISO. You will see it in the next video. Type in the comment section what is your favorite operating system. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. See you later, bye.